Until the lion learns to write his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why the lion is now telling his story. This is the lion's story. I've heard your story. I've heard his story. Her story. It's now time to listen to the lion's story. This is the African history class. And here, it is our own story. The African story. Today, we are going to be telling you the story of a great woman who changed the course of history. The story of a woman that you will not easily come by for obvious reasons. That is why it is very important to come close to the fire as we tell the story. Today, we are telling the story of Yeninga. Yeninga. Now, Yeninga was referred to as Yem Tori by the Dagombes. There was a kingdom that existed all the way from the 11th century going to the 12th century. The very first kingdom that existed in this part of the world called Ghana today. And this kingdom was founded by the great Nagbewa. Now, Nagbewa was such a great warrior who conquered so many different lands and he founded the kingdom of Dagbon. The kingdom of Dagbon is located in the northern part of Ghana today. It's such a powerful kingdom made up of so many different brothers all relating to one great king known as Nagbewa. Nagbewa had several sons and a daughter. The daughter was called Yem Tori. Yem Tori was so brilliant. And at the same time, she was sleek and elegant. Because of her beauty, her father decided to call her Yem Tori even at birth. And Yem in the Dagomba language simply means wisdom. She was so brilliant and wise. At a very young age, the great king, Nagbewa, decided that he had to teach his daughter guerrilla tactics and guerrilla warfare. So she started going to war from the age of 11. And by the age of 14, she was already warring with the Malinke people. And each war she went to, they won. She was a very good archer. She could play with arrows, spears, and when it came to horse riding, she was one of the best in the whole area. The Malinkes knew about her. Other ethnic groups around Africa knew about the great Yem Tori. It came to a time. Yem Tori was so ripe, so beautiful. She had reached the teenage ages, gone past puberty. And she felt that she needed somebody to harvest her fruits. But her father loved her too much. Her father, Nagbewa, the great king, could not phantom how a man would take his daughter away and call her his wife. So he locked her up. She only came out with escorts and she did not have the privilege to go out on her own. One day, she decided to teach her father a certain bitter lesson. She planted a whole wheat farm. And when the wheat came up and was so beautifully grown 
the ears came out so nice, golden looking. Everybody was talking about the great Yam Torres farm. And here the interesting thing. She decided not to harvest it. When it reached maturity, it all got rotting and got totally spoiled. Her father got angry and called her over and asked, You struggled so much, worked so hard to be able to plant a whole wheat farm. How come you left it to get rotten and spoiled? She looked at her father, Nagbewa, and said, My king, my father, that is how I feel. I feel that I am that wheat farm that you have toiled to put up. I grew up and became so beautiful, golden looking, so ripe. I need a man to harvest my fruits. You are not giving me that chance. Today I am rotting up. The king did not listen to her. Decided to still lock her up. One day, she was able to get one of her escorts. Oh, yes, one of her escorts to disguise her into a man. And they went out together on horseback. Oh, she started <laughs> fleeing from her father. Fleeing, fleeing, fleeing. Unfortunately, they came in contact with the Mal Malinkis. And the Malinkis were their topmost enemies, their sworn enemies. There were only two, the escorts and our heroine for today, Yem Tori. See what happened now. The Malinkis fought these two and were able to kill the escort. But the swiftness of Yem Tori could not be matched by the Malinkis and she escaped. She rode over and over until she crossed the river Volta. And when she crossed it, on the other side, she was so tired and fell asleep. She woke up and saw an elephant hunter by name Riaile. Riaile. When she saw Riaile, he was looking so handsome and so nice. And she told herself, this is the man who deserves to harvest my fruits. They fell in love. They went home. One thing led to the other. Boom, she got pregnant. Boom, she gave birth to a male child. And she decided to name this child Widraugo. Now, Widraugo simply means the stallion. When Riaile took Yem Tori to the other side of the Volta, her name changed. From Yamtori to Yanenga for obvious reasons. She was still disguising herself and trying to run away from her father. So she took the name Yanenga. What is the meaning of Yanenga? Yanenga means slim in the Moshi language. And it was all to define how beautiful she was. Remember her father, Nagbewa called her Yam Tori. Yam simply means brilliant, wise. And on the other side, she was known as Yanenga, which simply means slim, or better still, sleek. They had a child called Widraugo, and together with Widraugo, they started building up another empire. And this empire became known as the Moshi Kingdom. Now look at the interesting thing that happened. Nagbewa loved his daughter so much. He had heard about another woman on the other side of the volta. And that woman was known as Yanenga. He believed that this must be his daughter. Because all the characteristics that he got to hear of this other Yanenga were nothing but the characteristics of his one and only unique daughter. So he decided to go there on horseback. And when he arrived, he realized that it was his own daughter, Yem Tori, who had now given birth to a child by name Widraugo. He was so happy. They hugged. They were so happy to meet again. And Nagbewa returned to the northern part of today's Ghana, having invited his own daughter now called Yanenga, to come home for his blessing. And yes, it happened. Yanenga, Yamtori, now called Yanenga, 
now came with the sun, with Drago, all the way beyond the Volta again. And now she met with the father, took the blessing, and listened to what Nagbewa said. Nagbewa said, hey, this is my son as well. I am going to train him. I will give him all the wisdom I have about warfare. He trained the little boy in warfare, guerrilla warfare and tactics, and gave him a number of cows and a number of horses and so many other gifts, including the spear, the arrow, and the bow, and blessed him and asked them to go to the other side of the Volta and expand their territory. Yem Tori moved on. While she was in the northern part of today's Ghana, she was called Yem Tori. And when she crossed the Volta, she was called Yelenga. And the interesting thing is that the Moshis also have a name for Nagbewa. In the Moshi Empire, they call him Nadega. Nadega. And Yem Tori's mother, the sleek looking, ever beautiful woman, the Moses called her, oh my God. Father called Nadega, mother called Napoko. Napoko. They blessed them and let them move. And when they went, the Moshi kingdom started to spread. Listen, now the Moshi language and the Dagomba language are so close. And all the other languages that came from the loins of Nagbewa, in fact, the Kusasis call him Banwa. The Moses call him Nadega. The Dagombes call him Bewa. But it's one man, so powerful and strong. In fact, at a point, Nagbewa himself was so disappointed in his two children who fought each other over Chief Tansi, and one killed the other, and he commanded the ground to open. When the ground opened, he entered into it and it closed. He was never seen again. Today, when you go to Boko, the place where he entered the ground is there. There's a shrine there known as the Nagbewa Shrine or the Banwa Shrine. The Kusasis, the Dagombes, the Mampusis, the Nanumbes, and all these wonderful ethnic groups, including the Moses and so on and so forth, including the Dagabas and the Wallace, are from one great grandfather, Nagbewa. Or Banwa. So today, when I hear brothers fighting each other, Kusasis and Mampuses, it's one blood. Kusasis are from Bewa. Mampuses are from Bewa. Moses are from Bewa. Mo the Moshi kingdom was built by a woman from the loins of Nagbewa. Now, listen to this interesting thing. Now, when you go to Burkina Faso today, their highest award at FESPACO, which is the biggest film festival in West Africa and even beyond. They have what is known as Le Talon de Yanenga. It means the stallion of Yanenga. It is a golden carved stallion that is given as the highest award. In fact, at FESPACO Film Festival, just to honor, in fact, the founder, of the great Moshi kingdom. Widrago is a popular name among the Moses right there in Burkina Faso. And even the football team in Burkina Faso is called Les Etalons. It means the stallions. And it's all because of that stallion that Queen Yenenga, or better still, Yemtori, rode all the way into freedom from her father's own captivity, in quote. Today, my brother, my sister, we are telling the beautiful story of Yem Tori, the great black woman who crossed over and became known as Yenenga, the one who founded the great Moshe kingdom, the one who united us all. She came home to meet her father and they united again. Today, when you go to Burkina Faso, you know that it is a strong, beautiful kingdom that has its basis or its origin right there in the northern part of Ghana. No wonder anytime the Moshi king is to be 
installed or enskinned or crowned, they normally will come all the way to the northern part of Ghana to pay homage and to take blessing just as Yanenga did. This is the African History Class. And remember, our channel on YouTube is known as the African History Class. Make sure that uh, you subscribe to our YouTube channel and use hit on the notification button. Every week, we unleash very interesting stories, very powerful African stories, very authentic, so that you will not miss any one of this. But today's story about Yanenga, that great black woman who founded the Mosi Empire. I'm asking you in the bedding of knowledge. Now that you know that story, how would it impact your life in contemporary times? The bedding of knowledge. Now that you know, what would you do? Be an annual layer, mini obafe, yezunda kagane, mezaka yine, yean pabango, bukaya nam, fifia yenya, nukai nawo, banayo, a beden, lele and jiba singa be kune, lele and jiba singa beri. It's been the African history class. And today, we've been talking about that great queen, Queen Yanenga, aka Yam Tori, who lived over 900 years ago. It's been the lion story, the African history class.